everyone. Welcome back to Lucky by Nature. Angelic Vixen here. This is your no fluff art breaking news. In this episode, we will be talking about all of the optimizations that are coming soon. Contest winners are Eggtastic. The social and game suggestion roundup is very good this week. More sponsored mods are coming soon and the evolution event. As you know, this is no fluff art breaking news. So let's get right into it. I tell you what, 2019 is just an incredible year for Wildcard and for ARC. Um, the memory optimizations update for this week is absolutely incredible. They found a way to save two to four gigabytes of data on servers. That is a huge amount to fix the server lag issues. They say here there are times when gameplay engineers make improvements to game systems that are aimed specifically at increasing performance as we have done in our recent PC patch. These changes are often invisible to the player but are immensely helpful with things such as the infamous server lag. Although we try to outline these things in patch notes, we wanted to take the time today to explain in detail the changes and how they impact the game. So they go on to explain exactly how it works and what you know the outcome is, what is the result that they're trying to accomplish. They said here, a change like this has saved us two to four gigabytes of data on our servers and more memory means a smoother performance. We look forward to bringing you more updates and insight into our optimization efforts as well as bring these memory optimizations to console in the near future. This is huge because everything they fix from this point forward will benefit them for any DLC or any new ARC 2, let's say, that comes out because they've learned from their mistakes. But let's be honest, I mean, some of the greatest lessons that we learn in life actually come from failure due to our many mistakes, you know, and Wildcard, they're human. They're human people running this company and they have made, you know, their fair share of mistakes. But what this tells me for 2019 is they really are taking the time and they're putting in the energy to actually fix this game. And this game is worth the investment. So I am glad that they are taking a step back and they're really looking at it and they are making just incredible changes that are going to make playing ARC again so beautiful and so amazing. And I just can't wait. And I got to give a huge shout out to the egg painting contest winners. You guys are so amazing and so incredibly talented. I mean, look at all of these. They are just phenomenal. Good job to everyone who submitted, everyone who won. Keep it up because I tell you, we have such an incredible art community and we have some very talented people in it. All right, so we do have a couple questions this week from Social Roundup, and the first one is about the respawn from when a server shuts down and when it starts back up and how everything respawns immediately upon startup. And Jen goes on to explain, yes, I've mentioned this is on purpose and not a bug. It prevents people in single player from basically restarting to get infinite resources or loot. So if you didn't know how that worked, now you do. The next question is actually about real money transactions, and if you don't know, they're actually not allowed. But I'm sure if you're in any of the Facebook groups for ARC, you've actually seen it. Jen goes on to explain that real money transactions are not allowed on official servers and can result in bans and wipes. And then she goes on to explain that you need to contact customer service to, pri you know, to provide proof so that they can stop it from happening. So as you know, they're not allowed. If you do that, you are at risk of getting banned. So just don't do it. So the next question is actually about giving the art community an event schedule. And I personally see a lot of pros and cons to that, but let's talk about what Cedric said. He says, before there was a lot more manual work involved in setting up events. So the feasibility of doing an event really depended on what we had going on at the moment in terms of workload. Most of the events are set up on an automated system now, making it much easier and consistent you know, having consistent events going forward, which is fine. That sounds great. I don't think wildcards should ever give us a schedule again, because I mean, I personally feel kind of traumatized by, you know, the countdowns and then nothing. And then the promise of a date and then nothing. And then, you know, even showing up on time to do live feeds on Twitch, we would just sit there and, you know, talk all kinds of smack in chat while we waited an hour for them to show up. So I personally don't think that's a great idea. I think that would cause a lot of severe anxiety and frustration, especially if they missed one date, they could have a 100% record off, you know, let's say 10 events, and then boom, one of them, they missed the date and the time. And that's going to bring up so many emotions from everybody who's endured it for the last several years. So personally, I don't think that's a wise decision. But let me know what you guys think. 
The next question is actually starting on game development. So if you are interested in programming games, be sure to pause the video and read this tweet because said gives some very helpful information. The next question comes from Dave, Excited Kangaroo, which is actually one of the Ragnarok devs. And he goes on to say this, was looking through my old files and came across the repo from Valhalla. Is there any interest in bringing this up to date? I have some good memories from back then and absolutely because Valhalla was a great map Everything is great about Valhalla and honestly Dave is a great modder So I'm really excited if he does bring anything up to date I can't wait to try it out and see what happens So the next question is actually about mods ever coming to console and said said this we always look for new mod maps to come to console I think we have a pretty good track record of working with the mod community I do agree that they have a pretty good record of working with the mod community But I do also feel like they neglect both Xbox and PS4 there needs to be more for console. That's just the reality. And I hope going forward they can see that there is such a need to satisfy your console players because PC gets all the bells and whistles. We get all the shiny things. Xbox and PS4 do not. So I really hope that they consider that and going forward something great comes for console. All right, moving on to game suggestion roundup, and some of these are really interesting. Okay, so the first one is implementing primitive plus items into regular arc. They said this, for those that don't know what Primitive Plus is, it's a unique way of experiencing ARC in a mostly primitive environment. No electric or tech and many modern conveniences have been removed. There are certain items that have been requested to be added to the main game. Our first priority is getting Primitive Plus in an enjoyable state on all platforms. From there, we will look and see what the possibilities are for integration. Now. <laughs> I have a lot to say about this. Primitive Plus is a great way to play. They did, however, they're acting like this is like some sort of like, you know, unusual thing. They used to offer unofficial primitive servers that was not Primitive Plus, it was primitive. We didn't have guns, we didn't have electricity, we didn't have all those things, and they were very popular. The server that I started on uh, for Primitive was Server 92. It was always packed, it was always busy, okay? <laughs> so, they could easily implement this into the game. But first, I do agree they need to get Primitive Plus in and of itself fixed because it does not run very well. There's all kinds of problems, but luckily they're working on it and they're taking the time to actually fix it. So yes, I do feel like they could easily make Primitive Arc again. Like I would love to go back to Primitive Arc because it makes you work so hard. You learn how to navigate all of the creatures and you know really pay attention to their mechanics. That was one of the best decisions we ever made was playing Primitive. So if you guys ever get a chance to try it, I highly recommend it. So the next suggestion is showing the range for troughs. And you know what? That would be excellent because I hate the fact you can't really tell. You've kind of got to gauge it. And you know, when you play for a long time, you notice where it needs to go. You kind of have a really good idea of the spacing. But if it actually had that, it would make it so much easier. And they go on to say, great idea. We'll look to add this at a future point absolutely wonderful news i'm very excited so the next suggestion is making griffins breedable and they go on to say because wyverns and griffins aren't meant to be strong end game teams a change like this might require a rebalance to make sure they don't become too powerful there are no immediate plans to implement this change but we will keep the community request on the radar i personally don't think that that's a good idea to have a griffin be breedable because they're already strong they're already you know op enough we already have enough problems with them and that's why classic pvp doesn't you know they didn't want them in classic pvp so yeah for me personally i think griffins are fine just the way they are but let me know what you guys think and if you are involved in modding, the sponsored mod applications are open until June 5th. The link to the community crunch is in the description below, so be sure to go over there so you can follow the application steps so you can get involved. And the reoccurring evolution event will be available and active Friday the 10th of May at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time until Monday the 13th of May at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where it will be two times harvesting, two times taming, and two times experience rates. So that's it for this episode of No Fluff Arc Breaking News. I intend to keep them short and straight to the point. If you like that sort of thing, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I will be uploading these every week. If you found yourself liking this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It really means a lot to me. As always, thank you so very much for watching, and until next time, keep surviving!